Hello, friends. Welcome to another Magic Monday. Believe it or not, we're still going. Today, we are looking at a deck called Just You Wait, Mister, with Doc Orlock, Grizzle Genius. For two mana, we get a Bear Druid. Spells you cast from your graveyard or from exile cost two less to cast. Plotting cards cost two less. It's a 2-3. It's an uncommon, which gets back to the point of this series. Behind the hood, we got an average mana cost of four with a whopping 14 cards of six mana or more. 27 blue, 22 green, 20 creatures, five instants, 12 sorceries, 17 artifacts, six enchantments, a planeswalker, and only 38 lands because I only wanted 38 lands. That's why. So what do we got in here? We got a whole bunch of stuff that either has flashback so we can cast it from the graveyard or has plot to that end. Flashback, 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 plot. Create an XX green elemental creature token where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So the thing about this plot mechanic, if I could just talk about this for a second, it's weird, right? <clears throat> I think we can all agree it's a little weird. It's like, I want to do something, but just not yet. Hence the title of this deck, Just You Wait, Mister. So Jace Reawakened has a plus one. You may exile a non-land card with mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted. Okay. So that means I can play it next turn for free, basically. Root Coil Creeper lets us uh, tap to add two mana of any one color to cast spells from our graveyard, which works great with all of these flashback things, especially since our guy here makes them cost two less on top of that. So like Secrets of the Key, we can cost that flashback for a total of two mana or tapping a Root Coil Creeper. This Witherthorn Blessing is pretty neat. 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Tap up to one target creature you don't control, and it doesn't untap next turn. And it has flashback, so it's entirely possible to cast this twice in a turn for four mana, which is actually a pretty good deal. Mana Rock here, Mana Rock here. Glam Dring's in here to, uh, I don't know, be neat. Pretty much what it does. Mirror Shield uh, to protect our guy, our buddy, Doc Orlock. This guy's interesting. He's got Ward 2, and the top card of your library has Plot equal to its mana cost, and you may plot non-land cards from the top of your library. That's interesting. Ristic Study, because it's stupid broken card. And then we get into some of the creatures from this new set that have Plot. Like this guy, excuse me, Hiccup. This guy who lets us uh, give an instant or sorcery flashback, but pretty much every instant or sorcery in this deck already has it, so it's kind of useless, but he has Plot. Uh, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. But you see here, the plot cost is two. One generic, one green. But with our buddy out, it's only one green. And we just get a delay. So one thing that I like to do... Uh, what am I looking for here? The... Nope. Nope. Where's the dude? Let's get down here so you can see one of my favorite things about this. Ah, here he is. Outlaw Stitcher. He's got a plot of five. He's a one four, but when he enters the battlefield, create a two, two blue and black zombie rogue token, then put two one, one counters on that token for each spell you've cast this turn other than the first. So if you could plot enough stuff, you cast it all for free and then you dump this guy onto the battlefield, plot it or otherwise, and you can make a ridiculously big zombie rogue token, which is kind of fun. Uh, and here's a bunch of mana rocks. We also put Realm Breaker in here because I, I needed more cards. There weren't enough cards with plot. So they introduced these mechanics. And this is a complaint I have about modern magic. They introduce a mechanic, they use it for a set or two, and then it goes away. And it's never really fully developed. So to this end, I put in Realm Breaker specifically for that 10 Search your library for any number of Praetor cards, put them onto the battlefield and shuffle. We put in a handful of Praetors. Uh, mana rock here, mana rock here. We put in the blue and green monuments to just further reduce the cost of stuff. We've got Hadana's Climb to put 1-1 one, one counters on stuff and then turn it into a land where it gets plus XX, where X is its power and gains flying. Oh, that's pretty neat. 
This is also pretty neat. Create a token of uh, that's a copy of target non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 one, one green frog, so that can be handy. Path of the Vestival just lets us get a land and has flashback. This Trailblazer is kind of cool. When he enters the battlefield, add one mana of any color. So if you plot him, you're basically just getting a free mana the next turn. And whenever, whenever another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under control, draw a card. That's cool. Lucamina, the Moon Druid, has Specialize. You can specialize into the bear with this deck. Other creatures you control get 1-1 one, one and trample. But more so, I like this Crocodile. Because you tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls, and it doesn't untap as long as you control this crocodile form. And that's pretty cool. And as a druid, when the animal form dies, it basically just returns to the battlefield as her normal human form, and you can re-specialize. Um, growing rights are in here because, I don't know, why not? And then this guy here is a 5-5 five five if you plot it and then play it. So that's cool. Uh, down here, we got a Lone Shark. He helps us draw a card. Memory Deluge has Flashback. Outlaw Stitcher, we already talked about. Plan the Heist has Plot. Let's us draw three cards. Visage Bandit enters as a copy of a creature we control. And my favorite creature to control and copy is this guy. 5-5 five, five Railway Brawler Rhino with Reach and Trample. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put X 1-1 one, one counters on it where X is its power. So basically, uh, guys get big. And if we do this, they get real big. Rise of the Varmints, not super useful, but it has plot. And I don't know, the Varmints are kind of cute and horrific. This gin has plot, kind of useless card, but it has plot, so it's in here. And then we've got our Praetors. We got good old Vorniclex and Vorniclex and Gin Gataxis. Gataxius. This, 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 this guy. We got that guy, and he's over here too, in this form. And Vorniclex is over here in this form. And Gin is over here in this form. So we got six total praetors that we could search for uh what else we got we got a time warp because why not we got this guy who's got plot and gains us three life we got make your own luck which is fun because it will uh allow us to plot a non-land card from the top three of our library and as you saw, we have a lot of cards, six mana cost or higher, including Portal to Phyrexia and Omniscience, and one with the Multiverse. So being able to plot those for free, sort of, with Make Your Own Luck is pretty cool, because we get to put two into our hand and plot one of them. Self-Reflection has flashbacks, so we can make more copies of our Rhino Buddy. Storm of the Festival has flashbacks, so we can put permanents directly into the battlefield. Put this in here in part to, to control the countering, but also mostly for the Discover 5, which is kind of a cool ability. Contagion Engine, really no reason for it to be in here other than I think it's neat and horrific. Uh, and it put a 1-1 one, one counter on each target creature target player controls when it comes into play. 4-tap proliferate twice. So that's a good uh, way of doing a sort of a board wipe, but also helps out with some other things like our Jace Planeswalker or if we get 1-1 one, one counters on Doc Orlock or whatever. Kiara bests the Sea God because it's really broken. A Chroma's Memorial because I like when creatures have flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, protection from red and black. And Chromatic Ori because, I don't know, I wanted it. And then we got our lands. Uh, pretty standard array here. Vine Glimmer, Snarl. Hedge Maze is a forest island. So we have some stuff that's like seek a forest card with like Vorniclex. We can seek this one. But that's it, guys. That's the deck. It's a really fun deck to play. It's in terms of a power rating, I would not put this very high. You have to get a good draw or some good luck. Uh, like this Aloe Alchemist, when it becomes plotted, target creature gets plus three, two, and gains trample until end of turn. So that's interesting, but like not a game-winning card, right? But 
there are definitely ways to win. And um, yeah, like I said, it's a super fun deck to play, even if you don't win. The only time I didn't have fun playing this deck is when I was going against some of like the meta decks of like, oh, it's a pant laser deck, you know, pew, 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 right from my pants. And I just, I see pant laser and I just quit because it's, it's just cheap and dumb. I don't know. I don't like that card. Um, mono Heliod decks. I, y if you guys have been watching these content, this content for a while, you'll know how much I hate mono Heliod decks. I just think they're super unimaginative drivel. And I like imaginative drivel, such as just you wait, mister. So without further ado, we should get to some games. But first, let me remind you to be kind to yourselves, to be kind to each other, help make this world a better place. As always, if you like the video, please like the video. Let's get to some games. And we'll see you in the next episode.